Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about equals and hash code methods in Java. First, we'll discuss what equals method is and why we need to override equals method. Then we'll discuss about what hash code is and why to override hash code. And finally, we'll see what, when to override these methods. Well, equals and hash code are the two methods defined in object class. That is, there is a class object in Java where equals and hash code method are defined. And we know like every class in Java implicitly inherits object class. So every class has access to this equals and hash code methods. So now let us first understand what equals method is. So I'll take an example. You can see here an example, right? class money, right? So you have to, it has two properties, amount, which is integer, integer variable and currency code, right? So we have a constructor defined for that. All right. Now let us actually check the equality of these two objects. So we have two objects here, income and expenses, which are of object type money, right? So you can see here, both objects are initialized with the values and you can notice that two values are same, right? So the values for the two objects are same. Now, let us try to find the equality between these two objects, right? So equals returns Boolean. So let's capture that into some Boolean variable, right? And then print it on the console. So what's the expectation here? We can clearly see these two objects are same, right? So as they are taking the parameters are exactly the same. So the expectation is true, right? So let's actually see this now. I'm going to execute this code. And to our surprise, you can see it's false, right? So this is because the default implementation of equals method in Java, right? So uh, it actually verifies the equality of the object identity, right? Not the values of the properties. Instead, it only verifies the object identity as we can clearly see income and expense are two distinct instances. So it written false. So now in order to give more meaning to this equals method, we need to override this equals method. So what we are going to do now is we are going to override this equals method. So I have given some implementation. So you can see this is my own implementation for equals, right? So let me explain the code. You can see here, whenever we call equals method with the object pass, so this is the object to be compared, right? So first what we'll do is, we'll compare the object with the this object, right? So, so that if both are same, so the meaning of this is, if the objects are exactly the same, then we are going to return this, return true, right? And then we'll check the condition. If the object of comparison is the instance of money class, then we are checking the negation of it. If it is not the instance, then we are returning false, right? So neither of the conditions is matches, right? Or true. Then what we'll do is we'll type cache the object pass to the money, money object, right? And then we are going to write a condition here. So check, see this condition. What we are going to do here, we are going to verify the value of the properties of this class. So there are two properties, amount and currency code. So we need to, verify the equality of these two properties. So first we'll verify the currency code. See if the currency code of the this object and this has to be the this and other, right? So this has to be a other object. If both are null, so that also makes sense, right? So this even both are null also, those are equal. So that's one condition or the currency code if it is not null, then we will check the condition that if the currency code is equal to this currency code is equal to the other. Other is the object which we passed it for the comparison, right? If these two are equal, right? Then this becomes true. So the finally we will capture this conditions uh, uh, result into this object. And finally, we also wanted to verify this amount value, right? So we are verifying that here. So you can actually have it this or we, you can even ignore that. So it by default takes the this object, right? This dot amount is equal to other amount and the result which we 
we got it for the other property. So that we are returning here. So this is the implementation for the equals method where we overrided this equals method, right? So now without changing anything in the main method, let us execute the code and verify. And this time you can see it returns true. So it is beyond the object identity now. So the default implementation only, you know, compares the object identity, but we gave more meaning to the equals method by overriding it. You can see it here, right? So that's the reason it is verifying the prop values of the properties. So as both are same, it is written true, right? All right, along with this equals method, must whatever method uh, overridden implementation we give, this has to follow some contract. So Java actually gave the contract. So Java implement uh, gave this equals contract. So we can actually verify that contract in Java documentation itself. So here you can find the Java documentation. So you can just type equals method Java documentation, navigate here and you see the equals method here, right? Click on that. And here is a contract of the equals method, right? So public Boolean, it returns Boolean, object is passed. And you can see there are four criteria for the equals method contract. So it is reflexive. So for any non-null non reference, right? So it has to actually uh, x dot equals x should return true. So that is, so reflexive is an object should be equal to itself. So that's what we mean by reflexive, right? Next comes symmetry. Symmetry is for any null, null reference values x and y. So if x dot equals y should return true, if and only if y dot equals x returns true. Meaning uh, we can simply say that if whatever may be the x dot equals y result, right? So we should be getting the same result for y dot equals x as well. So that's the meaning of that symmetric right next comes the transitive property transitive property says that say x y z are the three objects right then if x dot equals y returns true and y dot equals z returns true then x dot z also x dot equals z should also return true so this is what we mean by transitive and the last criteria for the equals contract is consistent so whenever multiple invocations of x dot equals y so consistently should return true or consistently should return false. So provided the information used in equals comparisons on the object is modified, right? <coughs> no information used in equals comparison on the object is modified. Until then, it has to return the say either true or false consistently, right? So this, this is the equals contract and these are the different criteria. Most of the criteria, you can see it, it is like a common sense, right? So now, let us go back and see an example on this. So reflexive, I'm not going into that as that is like object is equal to the itself, right? So that's what reflexive is. Now let's verify symmetric, symmetric property, symmetric criteria, right? So here is, is an example. I created a class here. So you can see I'm using inheritance here. I'm extending the money class, which we created earlier. And you can see added new property store inside the OCHR class, right? So this is the constructor for it. And then we have overridden the equals method as well. See, almost the same implementation as what we did earlier, except that we included this condition for this new property store here. We have a new property store. You can see that condition we added here. And along with the amount and currency code, we have the store prop new property. So we are also including that into the condition here. This is how we have overwritten the equals method. Now, let us verify the symmetric criteria for equals contract, right? So for that, what I'm going to do is we'll create an object for money and we'll pass the parameters. I'll just pass some parameters like this. Voucher is a new class, right? So I'm going to create an voucher object as well. And observe, I'm passing, intentionally I'm passing same values. Say for example, this is a voucher of Amazon. 
remember ocher was inheriting money money class right now what we wanted to do is we wanted to verify x dot equals y what's the value and y dot equals x that is in our case money dot equals ocher and ocher dot equals money so what's the expectation <coughs> so money dot equals ocher ocher dot equals money right so whatever is the value but it has it is symmetric right so it has to return the same value for both both this only then symmetric contract is fulfilled right so let us execute this code now and you can see here first one returns true okay i didn't comment this out so ignore the first one and you can see the second one right true so it returns true money equals voucher yes money is uh, voucher as it inherited money class right so money is equal to voucher is returning true but voucher is not equal to money so we can clearly see here right voucher has three properties in it money has only two so voucher equals money was returning false but if you observe this is like violating the contract equals contract right so we need to fix this so why this happened was we are using inheritance right but we still wanted the uh, properties of the money in to be used in the voucher class so how do we fix that so we are going to create a new class i'm going to show you how to fix this now so that it will not violate the equals contract right so I just created a new class. I'm going to call that as correct voucher and observe we are not going to extend the money class. We are, so we are not using inheritance here, right? We are using composition. So instead what we did here, we created the money object as a property within the class, right? And here is the constructor, right? So instead of passing the money object here and uh, passing it to the inside, inside the constructor what we did we took the individual like uh, uh, properties of the money and then we are creating inside the constructor we are creating the object inside the constructor right so this is the constructor of the new new voucher or the correct voucher right and then equals we have overridden and it is pretty much like same what we discussed uh, in the previous uh, class voucher so except that we have a value property along with the store right so we included that value uh, property right the condition for the value property as well store was already there and finally we are returning the result here so this is the implementation of equals right this is how we are overridden the equals method now what we'll do is same same class uh, i'll just comment this out and we'll call this as this correct voucher, right? Correct voucher. Right, same values. I'm not modifying anything, right? So uh, intentionally I'm creating the same name uh, object, right? So that uh, with the same statements, we can execute the code and verify. Now you can see both are false. So it is now actually fixed the symmetric contract, right? So symmetric says if x dot equals y, uh, so you get some result. So it has to be equal to the y dot x as well. So now it is not violating the contract. It is written false in both the cases. So this is how we can actually fix the, you know, symmetric criteria of the equals contract. So what we did, we, instead of using inheritance, we just used the composition here, right? So this is all about equals method and why we need to override the equals method right now let us understand hash code hash code method right so for that again let's go back to the contract so hash code contract you can see the hash code here right in the java documentation so what it says it actually says you can see here hash code returns value for the object right and you can see the general contract of the hash code is whenever it is invoked on some same object more than once this is important during an execution of a java application 
during the execution complete execution of the java application right so the hash code method must consistently return the same integer so just think of hash code as a some integer some random integer right and it has to consistently return the same integer provided no information used in equals comparison on the object is modified right so till that time it has to return the consistent same integer provided it is in the same execution of a java application right so that's the first contract and the second one is if two objects are equal this is very important if two objects are equal according to the equals method then calling the hash code method on each of the two objects must produce the same result same integer result right so whenever two objects are equal then when we call the hash code method on these two objects the hash code result right it is hash code is an integer right so the integer result has to be the same that's what the second criteria says then finally the third one it is not required that if two objects are unequal according to the equals method then calling the hash code method on each of the two objects must produce distinct integer results right so what does that mean is so if you have two objects and hash code of these two objects are same so then it did not mean that the two objects are equal uh, to keep it more simpler you can just add to the second contract you can just add at the end that vice versa is not true right that is if two objects are equal then hash code on the objects must produce the same integer and vice versa is not true so that's what the third contract says right so this is about the hash code now let us understand with an example right what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new class I'm creating all the classes in single file for simplicity. So you can actually create in a different file as well, if you want. And see, I created a new class here. I have two properties, city and department, right? I created a constructor for that. All right. Now we wanted the equals method implementation. We wanted to override equals method. So you can define your own implementation or you can take the help of IDE as well. So IDE generates the equals implementation. So you click on generate, you see equals and hash code method here, click on that. So you can see either you can take the template of Java, Java implementation, Java 7 plus implementation, or you can select the IntelliJ default as well. So both has its own equals implementation. I just took the Java 7, Java's implementation first, equals. We'll not take hash codes. We'll do that later. So first, so this is how you can actually override the equals method using the, you know, IDE's default or using the Java implementation, right? So this is about equals, right? And this you can see hash code as well, right? But we'll come to this later. Or now we'll remove it. Now what we wanted to check, we wanted to check something. So we just de defined a class, created a class with two properties, city and department. We have a constructor and we have already the equals method, right? Now what we wanted to do, we wanted to check something. We wanted to create a map. So I'm going to create a map here. See, created a map with team as key. Team is a class which we just now created so it this map will have team as the key team object as the key and a string as the value and you can see some values inserted here right so key is the object team so you can see the team object here and the corresponding value right in the same way we had three values inserted into the map now what we'll do is we'll create an object of team and observe what I'm doing, right? So I'm going to create a object. If you see, I created the object same as is whatever was inserted into the map as the first object, right? Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to retrieve. So from leaders, leaders is a map. How do we retrieve from the map using get method, right? Get my team. So team is the object, which is a key, right? So that's the reason I created an object of team. And what's my object? Same as what's the first value, first key, right? So get off this key. So I have the expectation is to 
get this value and Tony, right? So let's execute this method and verify. And I can comment this out. So you can see it returns null, right? So it doesn't return Anthony. This is because when we actually ran this code, what happened was, so the hash code on this uh, object, new team, right? So uh, an object is created on the heap and it will have some random integer value as a hash code, right? So again, when we save new team, so it's a different object on the heap altogether. So a different hash code is written as these two hash codes are not equal. So when you're you're trying to get this, this one, right? Get my team. So it's not able to find this value, right? So that's the reason it is written null. So how do we fix this? We need to override the hash code method. So for that, you can actually, so whatever we had earlier, right? So let me show you again. You can just pass something like this objects dot hash as well, or you can even return some integer. This will also be fine, but uh, if you observe it, it will always return this constant. So even for the unequal objects also, the hash code will be equal. So we don't want it like that, right? So we can actually give our own implementation or actually take the implementation from the ID, right? So I'm giving my own implementation here. So you can take two prime numbers here and write this logic here. So what we are verifying here, if it is, if city is null, we are returning zero or else we are writing the city hash code. Same goes for the department property as well, right? So with this, what happens whenever we, an hash code is called, right? Uh, hash code is called, uh, so on any property, right? On any object, right? So this team object, then city hash code and department hash code will be calculated and final based on those values, result will be calculated, hash code will be generated. So if at all, if two objects are equal, so city and department will be same. So hash code will be same. So that's the logic we have used here. And why we use uh, these prime numbers uh, to generate the hashes, like uh, we, we can actually have any hash code algorithm defined here, but uh, in order to have different or unique hash codes, we are using prime numbers, right? All right, now, yep, without modifying anything, right? We just overridden an hash code and we wanted to verify the results now. And you can see here, it returns the actual Antony value because this time it considers these two objects as same or these two objects hash code is same, right? So that's the reason it's able to find the value. So this is why we need to override the hash code. And when did we override in the hash code? When we already have the equals method overridden, then we definitely need to override the hash code method. Otherwise, we'll, we saw uh, the inconsistencies in the result, right? So remember, whenever you override the equals method, we need to override the hash code method as well. All right. So this is about hash code. Now, when do we need to override these methods? So we wanted to override either both or neither of them. That's we, that's what we discussed, right? That's one thing. And domain driven design helps us decide circumstances when should we go for the default implementation. For example, for entity classes, for objects having intrinsic identity, we need to go for the default implementation. And for value objects, we need to prefer equality based on their properties. So as we have seen in the first example, right? Uh, so based on the values of the properties, we need to actually come um, prefer the equality comparison based on the properties, right? So this is where, when we need to override the, these methods. All right, so in this video, we discussed what equals method is and why to override equals method, what hash code method is, why to override hash code method. We also discussed contracts of equals and hash code methods, right? And finally, we have seen when to override these methods. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.